In this chapter, we will have a look on the new Ratchi 3.5 standard material. For all Ratchi 3.5 chapters, I will use ACCG color management. And if you are using new Cinema 4D R26, for better redshift performance, check out Preferences, Renderer, Redshift. And here, as you can see, I am not using Hybrid Rendering option, and I am using as Compute Device GPU only. In Render View, you can see Asset, which I am using for this chapter, with old type of standard material. In Ratchi 3.5, this type of material has been renamed on RS material. So still you can use this type of material, just remember that it has different name now. And as example, for RS material, I connected albedo texture into the diffuse color, roughness texture into the reflection roughness, and normal texture into the bump input. Displacement texture is using displacement output. A second step for the same result, I created new RS standard material, where I connected albedo texture into the base color, roughness texture into the reflection roughness, and normal texture into the bump input. Displacement texture is using displacement output. So as you can see, in terms of basic texturing, there are minimum changes. But important is to understand that these two materials are not the same, and both are using slightly different workflow. Also, new standard material contains a couple of features which you cannot find in RS material. As example, New RS standard material has available metalness and IOR in the same time. In RS material, you have to choose if you would like to use metalness or IOR instead. As I explained already, PBR materials are using two types of workflow, specular or metalness. If you would like to use new RS standard material properly, Important is to understand difference between these two PBR workflows. As example, if you would like to create dielectric material in metalness workflow, metalness value controls the reflectivity of dielectric material, and this value can be exactly zero or in the range between zero to zero point ninety nine, but never exactly one. And IOR value is one. But if you would like to create dielectric or any other type of material in specular workflow, metalness value has to be always zero, and IOR values depends on the material. As example, plastic has IOR 1.46, but glass 1.52. IOR values for all common materials you can find in our Redshift course links. So as you can see, these differences are not such a big deal. But in case that you would like to create metallic materials, differences between PBR workflows are more obvious. As example, if you would like to create metallic material in a metalness workflow, metalness value is supposed to be 1, and main metallic color is defined by base color. And in this case, IOR values are irrelevant. But if you would like to create metallic material in specular workflow, metalness value is supposed to be zero, base color is black, and main metallic color is defined by reflection color. For full metal power, you can use IOR value zero or significantly higher IOR values instead. Again, in IOR database, you can find correct IOR values for most common metallic materials as well. So as you can see, both PBR workflows are using different steps to achieve correct result. And if you would like to use new RS standard material, it's necessary to understand how metalness and IOR works and which PBR workflow it represents. Because if you don't understand how it works, 
and you will mix metalness contribution with IOR contribution as I am doing now in this example. It can produce interesting looking result, but mixing two different type of reflectivity together will definitely produce physically incorrect result. And why is it important? Don't forget that very often you will use for materials texture sets, which are coming from external sources such as substance or megascans. As example, Quixel megascans bridge into the Redshift is using metalness workflow. And if you would like to render with Redshift correct result, you have to understand how to correctly connect and control these textures inside the Redshift. So as summary, remember following. If you are using new standard material with metalness value 0, reflectivity you can control with IOR values. If you are using new standard material with metalness value 1, IOR values are irrelevant. And if you are using metalness contribution where are values greater than 0 but lower than 1, IOR values supposed to be 1. In this chapter, we will have look on Reci 3.5 standard material reflections. As I explained already, reflection intensity controls metalness or IOR. Lower values produce less visible reflections. Higher values produce more visible reflections. We have three sections where we can control reflections look. Reflection section, code section, and sheen section. Sheen component has its specific workflow, so details about fabric materials and sheen properties I will show you in different chapter. Reflections look depends on all reflection parameters and very often physically inaccurate reflections looks better than physically correct reflections. So remember that not always is necessary strictly follow all physically based rules, especially if you are not able to achieve good looking result. So feel free to manipulate and experiment with materials parameters as you need. Once render looks good, nobody cares it's physically accurate or not. For dielectric or non-metal materials, reflection color supposed to be white and reflection weight supposed to be 1. But if you have no any other option, you can use reflection color where you can tint color of your reflection exactly as you need. Also remember that reflection color brightness affects reflection visibility. Darker color produces less visible reflections. Reflection roughness controls reflection blurriness and it's very important parameter for surface imperfection. Roughness value 1 produces almost diffuse looking surface. For better looking result is important roughness inconsistency. That's the reason why I'm very often using roughness textures for surface imperfection. And as you can see it produces more natural looking result. And with scalar RAM node, I can control intensity or details of roughness texture. Reflection anisotropy is stretching reflections and rotation controls direction of anisotropic reflections. For more visible effect, you have to increase reflection roughness. As you can see now, anisotropy is more obvious so I can control rotation of this effect exactly as I need. And if I need another layer of reflection for some kind of wet or slimy looking surface, I can combine main reflection with code reflection. And in this case, I have to increase code weight. So as you can see, now I have control over code contribution and code parameters as well. And these are the main sections which controls reflection of dielectric or non-metal materials. But in case that I would like to create metallic material, for this type of material, main reflection section works a little bit different. 
As example, I will use metalness value 1 and in this case main metallic color is defined by base color. But in reflection section, I can still control metals edge tint with reflection color. So this time reflection color doesn't affect entire material but edge tint only. But any other reflection parameter such as roughness or anisotropy works exactly the same way as I already explained in previous examples. We are working now on Reci 3.5 material chapters which will be available soon as free update for all our students which purchased our Redshift Ultimate Edition. And here you can see preview of all upcoming RS 3.5 chapters. So as you can see we will cover a wide spectrum of material types and you will learn all details on how to use properly Regi 3.5 and all sections of new standard material as well. If you need more information about upcoming chapters, check out our website or link in the description.